Hey everybody, I'm Debbie Bellis with Feel Good Qigong. I also teach yoga and I wanted to do a, a little class that will need a strap, which is a great a tool to have. We're gonna also, if you have a, like a folding chair or a sturdy kitchen chair, that works too. We'll be using the chair. Um, I love using a chair because it just gives you that little bit of help with balancing. Um, it's, it's nice to use if you have a hard time, like getting on your hands and, you know, hands and knees. Um, it, you know, give it a try. I, I just really like using uh, a chair for that little extra support. So the tool tools today, a strap, and if you don't have a strap, you can also use a belt or a scarf, something like that. And also a folding chair. So we'll get started. We're going to come to standing right away. Have your chair, um, you know, to the side. And we're gonna start with the strap. So I'm gonna take the strap and I'm gonna bring it around my hands and um, find a good, you don't want it too tight because we're gonna be moving the arms up and down. So you want a, a pretty wide spread of your arms. Now, while you're doing this, remember to engage your abdominals, um, which means think of bringing your belly button to the back of your spine. And when you keep doing that, that'll engage your abdominals and really protect your back, especially if you have any kind of back, um, the pain, uh, engaging the belly, uh, the belly to the back of the spine will help protect and um, from exasperating any more pain. So we're just gonna take the strap, we're gonna bring it over the head. And again, you know, this is according to your flexibility. If you've got some shoulder stuff going on, then accommodate for that. And then if you can try to bring the strap behind you. So we're bringing it up and forward and then up and back, up and forward, and up and back. So this feels really good for the shoulders. It opens up the chest a little bit. You can lean back a little bit here. Also bring the spine into a back flexion. So we wanted the mantra in yoga is every day in every way, we wanna move our spine in four flexions, which would be back, forward, side to side, and a twist. So here's a side flexion. So bringing the strap and you're pressing the strap, well, you're using your hands to pull your strap. So you have a little um, more of a dynamic stretch here. Then we come to the other side. Now we can take it into, we can bring the strap in front of us again, and we're gonna twist the spine. So in that little routine, we just moved the spine. Here's our twisting flexion. Here's our back flexion. We're gonna add the forward flexion as you come forward um, bring the belly back to the back of the spine. You're rounding the spine into a cat tilt. And then you come up and you're going to go over to one side for your side flexion. And then a side flexion. Bring the strap in front of you. And we do our twisting flexion. So again, in this little bit of movement, using the strap, you're bringing your spine back as you inhale. Exhale, rounding forward, forward flexion. Inhale, exhale over to one side for your side flexion. Inhale, exhale over to the other side for your side flexion. And then inhale and exhale to your twisting flexion. Inhale and exhale to your flip, uh, uh, twisting flexion. And then again, we're gonna inhale back flexion. Exhale, forward flexion. Inhale, exhale, side flexion. Inhale, exhale, side flexion. Inhale, exhale, twisting flexion. Inhale, exhale, twisting flexion. And I'm gonna add a rotation in this also. So spread the legs a little bit wider and you can come all the way around in a rotation. You know, let the head drop, I mean, all the way around, taking it to the other direction. So in this little routine, you've just moved your spine in those four flexions and also in a rotation. Try to do this at least once a day before you start your day and then during the day. It didn't take me very long to do this. So an easy thing that you can incorporate into your day. Now we're gonna to come to the chair and I'm going to bring my chair right on my mat so it doesn't slip. I'm bringing my hands on the top of the chair and my feet are about hip width apart and I'm gonna go right into a dog tilt. So here's my dog tilt. 
I exhale as I round my spine into my cat tilt. Inhaling, dog tilt. Exhale, rounding into the cat tilt. Inhale, dog tilt. Exhale, cat tilt. And then slowly curl up one vertebrae at a time. Now we're going to warm up our body to do a forward flexion. So we just cross the arms over, warming up the body. So when we come into our forward flexion, the body, especially the back, has been warmed up. So it, you won't, again, irritate your spine. Then we start to bring, we bring our hands on our, on our waist. Again, belly to the back of the spine, really engage those abdominals. And then you start to hinge forward. Now what you can do here, this is gonna be different for everyone. Some of you might wanna bring your hands onto your chair as you come forward. You can also rest your head on the chair here too, if you want. You can hang out here, bringing, uh, crossing your arms and just kind of hanging out on your arms or on the forehead on the chair. Or you can bring your hands onto the bottom of the legs and come into your forward fold, fold this way. So there's lots of support here opening up that entire back body. Relax your arms, relax your head. And now bring your hands to your thighs, bend the knees. Again, dog tilt, exhale round into cat tilt, and then you slowly, slowly come back up to standing. Head and neck is always the last thing to come up. We're gonna do this again. We're gonna inhale, exhale, fold forward, hinge at the waist, bringing your head maybe on the chair or your arms on the chair or on the legs into your forward fold. Remember belly towards the back of the spine, feeling your entire back body from your pinky toes to your pinky fingers, stretching out, bend the knees, hands on thighs, arch the back, round the back, and then slowly come up. We're gonna do this again, inhale, and then exhale, dive forward, hinging at the hips, bringing the hands either to the floor or to the chair, the head either to the chair or towards the floor. Forward fold, stretching from your pinky toes to your fingers. Bend the knees, hands on thighs. Inhale, dog tilt. Exhale, cat tilt, slowly come up. We're gonna do this one more time, inhale. Exhale, dive forward, using the chair or not using the chair, back into your full forward fold, stretching your entire back body from your finger toe, from your toes, over the back, the shoulders and the neck, right down through your arms and, and, and fingers. Hands on thighs, arch the back, dog tilt, round the spine as you exhale and you slowly come up one vertebrae at a time, Round the shoulders a few times and just noticing how you're feeling. You should feel rooted and grounded and lengthened, especially if you're engaging those abdominals. Now we're going to take our, our right foot forward and we're taking the left leg back as far as you can comfortably. You're off the heels of that back foot and you're going to just have, again, this is why I like chairs, you're going to have this right knee touching the, the front of the chair for a little bit of, now you're not putting all your weight here, it's just for a little guidance here. And the, the left thigh, you wanna lift that up towards the back of the hamstring, and this will really engage that leg, it'll adjust your hips so they're centered. And now you're in a high lunge, so this is a high lunge, this is a supported high lunge. Now from here, we start to straighten this front leg out, releasing your hips towards the back of the leg. And now you're um, opening the front of the foot and the shin. You're also opening up, pulling, pressing down with that left heel, opening up the hamstring of the left leg. Now bend the knee again. Now this time you're coming onto the heel of the left foot. Toes are pointing towards you. This will give you a great stretch in the foot, the arch, and your hamstring, and the calf. Bend again, and then we'll do this one more time, stretching the leg. Now from here, taking this right leg to the back, and now you're in a high downward facing dog. Great stretch for the legs and the spine and the arms. 
Make sure your head is even with your arms so you can bring your head from side to side. Make sure, because you don't want your head cocked up, you don't want it dropping down, you want it even. Now from here, release the hands and you're gonna come to your hands and knees. You're gonna place your shoulders right under, or your wrists right under your shoulders. Spread your fingers nice and wide. Spread the knees or hip width apart under your hips. You're gonna press the knees away from each other like you're spreading the mat between your knees. This will broaden your low back. Again, engage your abdominals. And with your hands, you're pressing, similar to what you're doing with the knees, you're pressing the hands towards your body. This just gives a little broadness to the shoulders. Now we arch the back again. We round the spine again in a cat dog. You could shake out here. Also a rotation all the way around feels really nice. Take it to the other direction. We're gonna do a twist here. Take your left hand in the center and inhale your right arm up for a twist and then release other arm. Oh, and release, do a little cracking there. You're gonna take your hips towards your heels right into a child, either bringing your arms straight out in front of you, pressing your forehead to the floor, or you can make a little pillow with your hands and rest your forehead. Take some deep breaths into the back of your body. Try it's very quieting to the nervous system, and it's really good for your low back. And then from here, we'll come back to our hands and knees. And this time, we're taking our right foot forward again, but this time we're in a low lunge. Similar to high lunge, this, this chair is here for support. You're gonna press forward with your left hip um, pubic bone, and you'll feel that stretch in your thigh, left thigh. Now we're gonna move our hips back, keep that right foot straight on the floor, stretching your shin and your ankle. Come on to the heel, opening up the back of the leg. You can also do a little shimmy with the hips, working that hip joint a little bit, and then back to your low lunge. Taking your right hand on your right knee, and we twist over to our right for a spinal twist again. Now taking this right foot out to the side of the mat, press with your right hand on the inside of the thigh, opening up your hip a little bit. And then one more lunge, taking this right knee back, this time back to hands and knees. We'll do downward facing dog without the chair this time. Curl the toes under, lift your hips up, and release into your downward facing dog. You're gonna walk your hands to your feet and hang in a rag doll here. Just hang and then slowly curl up one vertebrae at a time. Still working on this right side. We're gonna take our right foot forward again. Bending that knee, make sure the knee is directly under your heel to protect your knee. And your left heel, you kick it out just a little bit. Just a little bit. And now we're gonna rotate our torso over this right leg. We're gonna release both arms up towards the ceiling into warrior one. And really root down through the legs, engage your abdominals into your warrior one for balance, for strength. Let's open it up. We're gonna lean back just a little bit, a big circle. So now we're just engaging and opening up the upper body into this warrior one. Using those leg muscles. And then we'll release and we'll come back to our standing position, noticing how it's feeling. I'm gonna take this over to the other side so you can see. I'm gonna take my left foot forward again. My right leg this time is coming back. I'm lifting my right thigh into towards the back of my hamstring, really engaging that leg and also engage my hips. My left knee is just touching the chair just slightly for support. I'm in my high lunge. And now I take my hips back, releasing my right heel towards the floor, keeping my left foot flat on the floor to open up my shin and my ankle. And then I'm gonna bend it again. And now I'm gonna come onto my heel, stretching the toes towards me. This is a great stretch for the legs and the foot, your ankle, and then back into the high lunge. One more time. 
can also do a little shimmy with the hips, working the hips a little bit. And then back into the high lunge. I'm gonna drop this left knee to the floor. I'm gonna take my left knee to my right on knee, back to hands and knees, broaden your low back by pressing the knees away from each other, like you're spreading the mat between your knees, and press back with your palms a little bit. So you're not actually bringing the back, it's just an isometric movement to broaden your shoulders, arching the back into my dog tilt once again, rounding into my cat tilt, doing some rotation, this feels really good on the spine, on the back. And then we take our hips towards our heels, stretching the arms straight out in front for a child. Either the arms straight out in front or make a little pillow and rest your forehead. And then we'll come back up to our hands and knees. I'm gonna take my Left foot forward this time for a low lunge. Press on top of your right foot if that right knee hurts in any way or bring some support under your knees. Knee pads are really nice too um, to wear if you have issues with your knees. Just gives that extra cushion. Or you can put a blanket under there, but I really like the knee pads. And then we take the hips back, straighten that front foot so you're opening up your shin and your ankle. Come onto the heel, working the hamstrings here maybe shimmying a little bit <clears throat> again, and you just move back and forth, letting that right hip come forth, the pubic bone come forth, so you get a nice stretch in that palm, in that thigh. And then release. Back to the low lunge, right, left hand on the left knee, and then you twist a little bit to the left for a spinal twist again. Then we're gonna take, shimmy your left foot over to the end of the mat, and then you just take your left hand on the inside of the thigh and work that hip a little bit. Then we'll come back to our hands and knees. We're gonna to come to a downward facing dog once again without the chair. Unless you need the chair, you certainly can use the chair. Bend one knee at a time, work on the uh, pumping the calves a little bit, opening up the calves, opening up your toes. And then walk the hands to your feet, hang in a rag doll, shake it all out, slowly curl up. Again, one vertebrae at a time. Take a breath or two as you transition. We're gonna step the left foot forward, bending this left knee directly under your heel. You're pressing down through the heel so you don't hurt the knee. You're kicking out your left heel slightly. And then you bring your hands to your hips and you rotate the hips so they're directly facing towards your left, towards your left knee. And then we reach the arms up overhead into warrior one. Engaging your abdominals, feeling left through the strength through the feet, rooting down and rounded. The upper body is light and releasing up to opposing movement, up and down. And then we inhale, let's open this up a little bit. A little bit of a back bend, doing a full circle here, using the strength of your legs as the upper body just smoothly moves through this movement. I just love the moving the uh, warrior one. And then we'll come back into our warrior one. Let's step the back foot forward, back into our, our mountain. We're gonna do a couple more things with the chair. We're gonna take our, um, let's take our right foot on the chair. You're gonna take your left hand on your right knee, taking your right arm behind you, and then we twist. And you press your left knee into your left hand for support, and you twist to your right for a spinal twist. It's a great way to do twists. And then we'll release. Now the left foot on the chair. You're gonna take your right hand on the left knee. Left arm is behind you. Support yourself with your back leg, your straight leg. And now we twist to our left for a spinal twist. And press that right hand into your knee, your knee into your hand for support. And it'll also help you twist a little bit further. 
and then release. We're going to work on our thighs a little bit. <clears throat> a couple ways of doing this. You can have your strap nearby as well. So um, I, you could do it this way. Two ways you can do the thigh. If you can reach your ankle, grab a hold of your ankle, you can hold onto your chair for a little support, and then you can uh, open your thighs this way. You can either, you can also move the knee back for a little bit of a deeper opening. So that's one way of working those thigh muscles. We can't forget about the thighs. We tend to do a lot of hamstring stretching. We forget about the thighs, but the thighs are as important as the back of the leg. Remember, you always want to think of front, back, side to side, that it's all open, not just only working one direction. Now, if you have tight um, thighs and you can't reach your foot, then take your strap. And what you're going to do is bring your knee. So I have my right knee on the chair, and then I'm going to take my strap on the ball mount of my foot, and then holding onto the chair, I can use my strap as a lever and, and do it this way. So that's another way. Remember, belly towards the back of the spine, always keeping that uh, abdominals engaged as you release. And then we'll do the other one. So it's a nice way to feel supported and you're also getting a really nice um, stretch in that thigh that we always seem to forget about. And then taking that strap on the ball mount of your foot. That could be tricky in itself. One side's always easier, right? And then we do the same thing. And release. We'll do one more uh, balancing posture. Have the chair on your left side for a little support. Sometimes just holding your finger on the chair makes all the difference in the posture. We're gonna work on our proprioceptors. They're, they're sensory uh, sensors of our body. Uh, when babies are born, they flare a lot, right? Their, their arms are moving, their legs, and they don't know what to do with them. So that's why we swaddle babies because they haven't, they're not used to the, their gravity. They're not used to their world yet. They're just taking in everything. So we swaddle them until they finally start to we release the swaddle, they finally start to feel touch. Their sensory perceptors are very, very heightened. They start to crawl, they start to stand, and then so forth. Then as we start to get older, those sensories, those proprioceptors get dull, and we lose our balance because of that. So we're gonna activate our proprioceptors. The proprioceptors are very strong in the palm, so we are gonna rub our hands together to activate our proprioceptors, and also the bottom of our feet are very active too for proprioceptors. So just kind of um, stamp your feet a little bit to activate your proprioceptors. And the other sensitive, really sensitive area of proprioceptors are around the mouth. So you can also tap that. I know this sounds silly, but it makes a big difference with balancing. So we're activating our proprioceptors before we start our balancing. Now you might not need the chair, but if you do, you don't, but you don't hold onto the chair. You're not leaning onto the chair. All it takes is one little finger to help. So we'll start with our mat. We're rooted down, we're lengthening up, and we're slowly going to lift, bring the weight on your uh, left leg, the chair's on the left. We start to come onto our right toes and we start to lift our left, our right knee up. Again, I'm losing a little bit of balance. So I'm just bringing my little thing, my finger onto the chair, and boy, what a difference. Now you're gonna flex your foot, and now take that heel and start to bring it behind you. And then back. And then up, and then release. So now maybe do it without the chair. Root down, find your gaze, lifting that knee up. You could wobble a little bit. Wobbling's not a bad thing. And then if you want to bring the heel back, see I'm losing my balance, I'm gonna bring my finger to the chair and now I'm gonna balance. So balancing is really important. It's okay to wobble because your body's getting used to 
the, you know, finding that balance, that neutral centeredness. But we need to practice. We need to practice on one leg. We come back into our mountain. We're down, lengthen up. The weight is going to be now on your right leg. The chair is on the right in case I need to touch it a little bit. And I'm going to start to come onto my left toes and I start to bring my knee up. So for me, this side's a little bit easier, pressing, lifting my toes up and then bringing my heel back. And that's not unusual to have one side stronger than the other, more balanced. So again, I have my chair here, I could just kind of touch. And that makes such a big difference by just touching the, the chair. We'll do this again with or without the chair. So maybe start without it, depending on how you're feeling. Some days are better than others, and that's very natural too. And when you're ready, we start to lift the left knee up, really charge that foot. Bring the heel back. And then bring it forward and release. And there you go. And then let's, let's gather all this energy all around us, all the stretching, the balancing we did. And we bring the hands together, rest them at your heart, and letting this little practice bring for you whatever you need today. And thank you so much for joining. Have a good day, everyone. Bye.